Hey, what's going on everyone? So, um, as you know, Streets of Rage 4 has finally released and instead of me reviewing the game, something that you know, my channel isn't exactly great at doing because it takes me so long to complete games these days, um, I thought I'd um, discuss my initial reactions to this game and how ultimately Streets of Rage 4 became the game that I now see it probably needed to be. So, you know, for, for those who are subscribed to me, you might know that I'm an old school Sega fan, have been and always will be, and have grown up on all of Sega's most prominent IPs. And of course, the Streets of Age series, you know, uh, specifically one and two, is one of those IPs that I hold near and dear to my heart and still play to this day, with me even buying the M2. 3D ports on the Nintendo 3DS, which I played loads. I love those games. You know, so I love Streets of Rage and class it as a triple A IP, you know, even though it's it's been gone for all these years. So after the initial out of nowhere reveal of Streets of Rage 4, I was left feeling um, underwhelmed, you know, for sure. And so were many of us, you know, even you know if our excitement, you know, to see the game return was, was high, you know, but like with all Sega IPs of the modern age, it's become almost natural to have a high level of skepticism in regards to what the quality of the final game will be like. Um, my biggest gripes initially were the art style, uh, which although looked clean, um, you know, was certainly different to previous entries, and so were the character models. You know, um, especially Axel, who, who looked like he put on a ton of weight, and you know, not in a visually pleasing way. Um, and the soundtrack, you know, which based on the trailer wasn't exactly what we were hoping to hear um, from a new Streets of Rage. But all these things, you know, based off the first trailer, were somewhat um, trivial. And over time, all that could change. You know, something I pointed out in my initial um, reaction. But what got me the most? Um, what got me the most with, with, with the game still being in 2D? Um, you know, not not a massive issue to be honest. You know, as I'm an advocate of 2D gaming. Um, but my biggest biggest gripe was the initial view of the gameplay. Um, you know, gameplay that looked like Streets of Rage, but also nothing more than that. Um, you know, after all these years, you know, if Streets of Rage was going to return in the modern era, um, after they skipped Sega's last two consoles, both the Sega Saturn, um, my, my, sec you know, my second favourite console of all time, um, and then the Sega Dreamcast, you know, another legendary system, you know, way ahead of its time, I, I, I wanted and expected, um, you know, hell, I, I, I even demanded, you know, from a selfish gamer's point of view, um, for Streets of Rage 4 to re return with all the AAA budget that Sega could muster up, um, as unrealistic as I was from, from modern Sega. Um, this is an IP, you know, that like I said, I, I personally class as AAA as it comes, you know, both in name and execution. So seeing Streets of Rage 4 being a 2D game again and, and clearly playing um, a lot of homage to the original titles said nothing more to me than it's going to look and play great, uh, but just be more of the same, somewhat, I suppose, restricted in how it could potentially evolve after 20 plus years of, of gaming industry evolution. Where, where many um, of Sega's greatest and, and most cherished gaming IPs have been left in limbo, um, with fans like me begging and pleading to see them return to glory. Um, but at the same time, you know, also, I suppose, also seeing how Sega has treated many of its current um, biggest IPs and and part of us, you know, I suppose, actually, you know, wondering, do we even want Sega to return to the old games um, we love so much? You know, perhaps it would be better for them just to remain in the past, you know, but I suppose Sega's not the only one guilty of this. Um, you know, I, I was upset about Streets of Age 4 because it was being too familiar, too safe in its return. And many parts of me feel that if IPs like this have, you know, been gone for so long, and you know, taking into consideration the taste of modern gamers who can often turn their backs to classic genres like this, um, I felt that this was the wrong choice. Um, and not only that, you know, we, we later learned that Sega themselves weren't technically directly involved and the IP was um, given to another studio, a, a studio who had um, revived somewhat another classic Sega IP um, in, in, in the guise of Monster Boy. And you know, they've done a fantastic job, you know, um, in, in fact I, I bought the game on a Nintendo um, Switch myself. Um, 
your Batiste will also impart a smaller um, indie developer, which, which has nothing. You know, let me point this out. This has nothing to do with their with their talent. As many indie devs put many AAA devs to shame. You know, I can tell you that much straight away. But but already I knew that the budget wouldn't be there to give Streets of Rage 4 the return I always envisioned in my mind. Um, something that perhaps Platinum Games could conjure up with a with a Bayonetta or the or a Mad World or a um, or a God Hand style of game. You know, but looking all modern with stunning. You know, like neon lit 80s, you know, like backgrounds um, with a ton of destruct uh, destructible environments, you know, things you can, loads of things you can pick up and throw, um, and insane com combos that also play heavily into the co op aspect of gameplay that Streets of Rage is so famous for, and I remember fondly. You know, but, you know, this, this never happened, and um, instead, you know, as time went on, new trailers and gameplay kept on emerging um, of Streets of Rage 4. Um, then I found out that you know, the original composers were brought on board, something I spoke about in another somewhat um, emotional video. And as more details dropped about classic characters and soundtracks returning, uh, more combos and, and environments being shown off looking great, um, the more my fear about this game started to fade and the hype kicked in. You know, to the point where I, I, you know, I pre-ordered the physical Switch edition um, the other day and then also bought the game day one digitally. Um, on the PlayStation 4 in order to play my friends, so in, in some respect I've, I've, I've double dipped. Um, something I try not to do. Um, you know, at least you know these days, you know, with money and stuff. Um, and after completing the game, um, as well as seeing the overwhelming uh, positivity towards it you know, from all over the gaming community, you know, I, I held my hands up and said, you know what, this is exactly what this game needed to be. And for the most part, the developers nailed it. You know, absolutely nailed it. That the gameplay is fantastic. It's it's meaty and engaging. You know, just like the originals, um, the backgrounds and character models are utterly sublime. And it's got some of the best levels in, in Streets of Rage history. You know, with, without a doubt. And the soundtrack, you know, not quite up to the same level as the originals. You know, but perhaps that was never possible. Um, you know, the soundtrack is still jamming. It's got some deep and electric moments in in nature, and I, I just I just love it. You know, so so this is this is where I admit to myself that I was wrong. Um, you know, sometimes some classic IPs don't need to reinvent the wheel or, or come back looking as AAA as they once were. Some, you know, sometimes you just, you just need to pay respect to the source while still in many ways elevating many um, aspects of, of it with, with, with modern standards. Um, and, and if this is done correctly, you know, like with Streets of Rage 4, you're reminded why you fell in love with the series in the first place or why some series should remain as they, as they were, you know, as they are. You know, because, you know, because they were you know, perhaps perfect from the start and, and don't need to change, you know, similar to games like Tetris or, um, or Street Fighter as an example. Um, you know, but this also highlights to me why not trying to go beyond what was already mastered you know, by the greats is, is so important. So I think I've done a video on, in, re in regards to another Sega IP of all games, um, the Panzer Dragoon remake. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's important, you know, because when bringing these IPs back, you know, you don't need to fix what isn't broken, you know, as, as, as they say, I suppose. Um, as for Street Rage 4, you know, just, just buy this game, it's, it's, it's fantastic and in the future I'll be thinking harder about what I want from some IPs and what's perhaps, what perhaps they, they need to do um, in the video game world that is, I suppose, utterly different compared to what I um, grew up with. Um, and also, you know, just, just sometimes, just, just wait. For more details you know but at the same time i've spoken about this before about how important great reveal trailers are and and conveying the information of what you're trying to do um with, with games when you first show them you know I've, I've spoken about this in the past but you know i'm i'm, I'm done here you know let me know if you've played Street Rage 4 you know what are your thoughts are you happy with how it's returned um i personally think it's worthy of that number four um, you know, without a doubt, and you know, unlike you know, the trash that was Sonic, uh, Sonic Four. You know, my God, you know, let's all forget about that one. <laughs> you know, but um, as always, you know, thanks for listening. Leave some comments below. Take care, at all, and peace.